is Nick Sirianni lo- losing this locker room? Oh man, I, I I think maybe he is, and the only cure is to win. And I feel sorry if Sirianni wa- wants to keep his job and win this win this locker room and this fan base back. That means they're going to really put a hurting on the Giants this weekend. And Saquon is probably going to have two to three touchdowns and a bunch of carries and and returning back there. But he needs to he needs to just stick to coaching and stop all the antics Um, and he'll be fine. But if he if he ends up being viral again before the season is over, not for something football wise or winning wise, I'm sure that he's another guy that's on the hot seat. That was interesting what Nate said. I was curious if he was going to be like, nope, the Sirianni stuff is overblown. Think about who he does the podcast with. Eagles Connections. And he's like, yeah, I think he might be losing the locker room. Like a lot of this stuff that's out there, it sounds like it could be real. And we can go right to that one, I guess, for live dogs, Sam. Like I'm staring at that three. Like should that be three against the Giants? Giants three. I assume Neighbors is returning this week. Eagles, they just survive against the worst quarterback in the NFL, the dumpster fire that is the Cleveland Browns. They just barely get by them. Yes, they win. Sirianni's telling the fans all about it. He's proud of the fact, and the fans are like, you just came off a bye, and you're going against the Browns, and you're celebrating this garbage? Like They came nowhere near covering the number. Are the Giants a live dog? Do live dogs still exist after last weekend? If they do, remember what was happening certainly... before this weekend. <laughs> it was all dogs, right? <laughs> Two things I need to know before I would ever bet the Giants in this spot. One, what's up with Malik Neighbors? Two, what's up with Devin Singletary? Because without those two guys, the Giants could not move the ball. They didn't even cross double figures on Sunday night in a spot that you were facing a team that couldn't negate anything you were doing offensively. The Bengals' defense was horrible. And we had chronicled for over a month how easy it was to either bet against the Bengals or bet on overs. Now, eventually, things correct themselves in the NFL, as they did this past Sunday when every home dog hit or did not hit. Which one was it? I forget. You told me to erase it. Every home dog (laughs) lost. But the Bengals come out and play to a score of, I think it was 17 to seven. So that was very uncharacteristic for a Bengals score this year. I mean, they couldn't, they couldn't do anything on defense. And then they come out on Sunday night and it's 17 to seven. Burrow has that rushing defense and the Bengals defense made all the plays. Daniel Jones was awful in the game, but he didn't have any weapons. So I would need to know a lot more about neighbors and Singletary before I even thought about it. Initial lean is actually to the Eagles for me. I'm still glass half full on the Eagles, and I just don't think the Giants are any good. I was considering Patriots until uh, I realized that the Patriots still have not left for London, and it's not tonight. It's not tomorrow morning. It is Thursday night, and yes, the the Jaguars stink right now. We all understand that. Doug Peterson coaching for his job once again. We just did this a couple weeks ago, and now he's doing it once again. But uh, I hate the fact that the Patriots are leaving so late, and the Jaguars have been there for a couple of weeks. Does it matter, though? Does it matter if Jacksonville has been there? That locker room is probably a mess, at least in New England. You can see the changing of the guard. And Drake may put up points. If I were to say that, hey, the Patriots are going to score 21 today, you'd think they had a pretty decent shot to cover seven, right, against Houston? But no, Houston scores 41 and you score 21. Um, I don't love the travel situation. I also don't love Jacksonville as a favorite. But I'll tell you what, they've gotten bet up basically all week. The look ahead was four and a half. They reopened at five. Now it's out to six at a couple shops offshore. So the support coming in for Jacksonville, it's not a big number. Look, five and a half, six is not a big number. That's one touchdown. Nope. So if you could get behind Jacksonville, I don't think you're you're in the wrong. Clearly the market betting against New England, that's a team that doesn't have any talent. That's the problem. You have a Jacksonville team that has a pretty decent power rating and has on paper a solid offense with a decent quarterback. 
The problem is the coaching, the schematics, the penalties. How many penalties did they have against the Bears? They were awful, just undisciplined and unable to do the simple things right to win a football game. It's not talent in Jacksonville. It's it's everything else. It's the coaching. It's the mm-hmm. discipline that has really gone south. Where you look at New England, it's no talent, no offensive line, no, no line. receivers. Ramondre Stevenson hurt on the defense. They have two good players because Judon's gone. You got the rookie, uh, or not the rookie, the second-year corner, Christian Gonzalez. They like him. But there's just not a lot of dudes on that team. So I don't know. I probably won't bet the London game. I did it last week, and I, I hated myself. Costos and I are watching the game on Sunday, yeah. holding Jacksonville. I don't oh, know that. It's a lonely, lonely place, holding <laughs> Jacksonville on a Sunday morning early Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not interested. And, and there's a lot going on with the surface. They changed the surface. Apparently nobody knows is does that mean more scoring, less scoring, a lot of things up in the air. I'm not really interested in that one. All right. You give me a live dog. You have one. This is a weird card, man. No, there's some great matchups. Okay. That's fair. I I'll, do. I'll, I'll, I do. I'm kidding. I'm playing into the wounding. Can I talk you into 453 Seattle catching three at Atlanta? Try. Mm. Jackson Smith and Jigba was in my dream last night, and he caught three touchdowns. (laughs) (laughs) Sold. (laughs) Say no more. (laughs) No, it's just you you have a decent offense in Seattle that has maybe underperformed. They have so many weapons. The defense should be healthier. Remember the last time we saw them, they were missing multiple starters. They also, Joe, they played last Thursday. So you get that that sweet rest rest spot where you play Thursday. You don't have to hit any contact over the weekend, and then you don't play until the following Sunday. I usually love these teams that play on Thursday night and then don't play until the following Sunday. Seattle also... You know, remember coming into that game, people were high on Seattle because of how they played against Detroit. And then they lost to the Giants. And you're like, ah, Seattle, I don't know about Seattle. Then they lose to San Francisco. And I think the perception on Seattle is down. But the market is not. Pinnacle just moved to two and a half. So Pinnacle comes off the three on a Wednesday morning. Every book basically painted three. Atlanta minus three. And there goes Pinnacle to two and a half at 9 47 a.m eastern i think you're going to see some sharp support for seattle that doesn't mean it's going to win but that's basically when you look at that game when you see atlanta only minus three at home that's built in respect for the dog yeah i wasn't all that impressed with atlanta over the weekend against carolina either that was carolina uh, really... is awful god awful. It's, they're so bad just disgusting i uh, speed of games you don't want to bet you're talking about the London game. What about tomorrow night? New Orleans, Denver. Like, who's healthy? Who's playing? So I guess we still have Rattler out there. You look at the not participate. Olave's going to be out. It looks like Shahid's going to be out for the Saints. Where is the rookie quarterback making start number two going to be throwing the football in this game? And then you've got the Sean Payton revenge factor. And they're missing a bunch of guys. They've been dealing with offensive line injuries. Patrick Sertan, it looks like he's going to be missing this game with a concussion, short week, quick turnaround. I I don't know what you do with this game. Maybe Rattler throws it to himself, like in the movies. He just throws it and then runs and catches it. Like they Taysom do in the Hill movies. back. It's Taysom, <laughs> he's limited. Him and Taysom. Oh, that that'll do it. That'll get you to New Orleans. Taysom Hill's return. No, Ugh, what a Bub horrible, means what a Bub means had a bunch of catches. Game. Yeah, I'm not interested in that one. I don't know. Okay, he, here's one that I'm guessing will be public. Public dog. Houston, plus two and a half to plus three at Green Bay. Big time. That'll be a public dog, right? Houston will be a public dog. I also think Detroit will be a public dog, especially oh. after Detroit. <laughs> Detroit just beat Dallas. 47 to nine and guys are on social taking victory laps for the square side of the season, Detroit minus three. Now I get points with Detroit. Well, 
Look at where this opened and look at where it's moving to. Minnesota getting the early money. This number reopened in Vegas at one and a half, and now it is two and a half. It is two at a couple shops. BetMGM, though, has a two and a half. Minnesota laying that number at home against Detroit. Detroit is going to be a very, very, very popular side. Doesn't mean it won't win, but I can tell you this, and I can assure you this, Detroit will have a much tougher time moving the football on Minnesota than it did against Dallas. I'll tell you right now, I will be a Minnesota, sir. 100%. Uh, Yeah. Aaron Jones, it sounds like he's going to make his return. You've got the Vikings coming off the bye. You've got the Hutchinson injury. I don't think people quite understand what he meant to that defense. He was far and away the best edge rusher that we've seen in the league so far, and now you're just going to turn around and replace that dude. Yeah. Yep. Uh, By the way, Hawkinson, if it's not this week, it's going to be soon. It sounds like he's going to be returning for the Vikings. When are the Vikings going to lose? I don't know. I don't expect it to be this game, but could be wrong. Chiefs are a dog. more at you? I was going to say, I was going to say, no, this, I wasn't going to say Chiefs. I was going to say the Rams are laying six and a half. I know. To the Raiders. I, I, uh, Where's the bell? Get ready for the bell because every time we talk about this game, people are going to say, I can't. I can't. And I understand why they say they can't because I'm about to say it. Can you? Can you? I'd much rather take three and a half with Tampa Bay on a Monday night at home. Tampa Bay plus three and a half might be my favorite dog against Baltimore. That's a good spot. I don't like mm-hmm. laying more than a field goal with Lamar. That Bucks defense is getting healthier and healthier every week. I can't believe the numbers they're throwing up offensively. Bucks have been very, very impressive. <laughs> 